What's up guys, Riley here, and today we're going to be going over a few steps and tips to building your SEX24 course. You heard it guys, for this video we're going to be going over some steps and tips you can use to build your RC truck course. Now this is not covering just SEX24 courses. Um, the reason I say that is because that's what I use it for. I'm sure it'll work for 10th scale and all that. Um, so we're not doing much of a video. I'm just going to show pictures throughout the way. And you can see how I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So there were multiple times where I had to change up what I was building. So let's go ahead and get into some tips. Tip number one. Have your SEX24 or whatever vehicle out there so that you can use it as a scale reference. One, you need it charged to make sure that your track is somewhat capable um, and it's not too hard or frustrating to get across when building your course. Tip number two, keep it clean. This is uh, one thing that I have struggled with, especially with the mini course, because I don't have much space for it. What I mean by keeping it clean is by not cluttering all the obstacles up in one little area um, just kind of make sure it's somewhat spread out not too spread out especially with crawlers because uh, they're not very fast one thing I hate is when it's not a big enough area and I can't just make one good turn I'll have to make like a two-point turn or something to get around the corner or onto an obstacle um, so try and limit that because that can be very frustrating and annoying. Tip number three, take your time. As always, with anything you do, you should take your time unless you're trying to deactivate a bomb or something. Um, but taking your time on the course, this took me a few weeks to do because I had no clue what I wanted to do. But I wanted to change it and get a video out for you guys. I do have, I think, one video of me building the big course out in the woods. Uh, I think it'll be right here. Um, but I do have one video. I'll put it up there somewhere, one of these corners. I think it's this one, because it's backwards, but I don't know. Um, but I really wanted to get this video out for you guys. Um, so I decided to redo the course. So taking your time will help you figure out what you want to build um, and where you want to build it. <clears throat> so like I said, it took me like one, two weeks to build this. So now we need to get on to the steps and on how I built it. Step number one, you want to map out your course area. Knowing where your course, how much uh, space you have for your course really helps determine your obstacles and such. Um, for me, when I'm mapping it out and cleaning it out, um, you know, raking leaves away, anything that you don't want there, usually once I'm done raking or whatever, I'll take the back of a hard rake and I'll scoop up all of the loose dirt. As you can see, I'll use it throughout the video um, or the pictures. Uh, I used it different ways before I could figure out how, what I was going to do with the course. Another thing for step one, you want to think of what you're going to build and kind of think of a theme style. Um, so mine didn't really have much of a theme. I did want a bridge um, and a bed of rocks, as always. That's usually what I do. Also, I wanted to go for something that I could really test the trucks on, where the, out, uh, the big course that I've got in the woods actually is more of just a, a have fun course. It's not much... You don't do much testing on that. There is a hill climb, um, but there's not much testing on that. So that's what I kind of reserve the mini course for, is for testing the capabilities of the truck, um, like incline and flex. Um, as you see, I'm actually not done with this course. Well, I'm done with the main part of the course, but I got a few things I think I want to add. I need to find somewhere to put a, a ramp um, to test the incline on the trucks. Um, but theme wise, depending on your materials is what you're going to do really, um, or where you're at. So where I'm at, it's mostly just 
not much of a theme. But like in the woods, I have the the garage with the silo and stuff with all the uh, model car chassis and bodies, whatever, sitting out there. Um, so that's kind of what I mean by a theme. You don't have to have all those um, props or whatever out there. You just kind of use what you've got. Step number two, uh, you're going to find, once you figure out what you're going to build, uh, the obstacles you're going to make, you need to figure out where you're going to place them. Um, a tip for step number two is if you're having a hard time uh, finding obstacles to make or figuring out where you want to put them, find at least one obstacle that you can place down that you know you want it there. And then just kind of use that to, um, as a reference or just to picture some other things that might help a little. Um, so I use that when doing the rock course on the pictures. Um, but yeah, if you have, another thing is when you don't have enough obstacles or you can't find any obstacles, um, always go on YouTube or something. Uh, there's plenty of builds up there and if anything you can see indoor courses and look at those um, because I mean they still kind of work the same as outside except it you can't really move around because most of mostly it's foam um, but just the things they have on indoor courses you can use outside too step three so you want to find all your material so stop and think of what you're gonna build um, and figure out what you need so in this I didn't know what I was gonna do I went over this multiple times um, so I didn't really have what I needed um, but I did have a piece of wood I was able to build a bridge um, so if you think of your obstacles um, you need to find your materials whether you're gonna need wood wood planks whether you need to go buy something because um, I definitely hate starting to build and going hmm I don't have this, I need to go buy something. Um, so definitely get your materials before you start the build. Step number four, you're gonna start placing your obstacles. Um, back to the earlier tip I gave you, if you can't think of any obstacles, place down at least one good obstacle you have and just kind of reference off of that um, and just kind of picture a bunch of RC trucks driving everywhere. Um, what would they be doing, you know? Uh, so, placing your obstacles, the rake trick definitely works with that, figure out, figuring out the ground. So, a few things you can do, like if you're doing a bridge, um, actually on my course there was a dip uh, where the bridge is. So I used that just to get some more clearance under the bridge which I didn't need much clearance. I had plenty of clearance already. But um, just to show you, you can use the ground to your advantage for stuff like that. Number five, back to one of the tips, you really need to use your truck while you're working. So periodically, once I've done like half an obstacle, so like once I did the bridge or once I got to the rocks, once I finished the rock bed, I actually took the SEX 24s on it um, just to make sure it was capable and not too hard I ended up having to move a few things down um, or around because it was hanging up super bad I know if I drove it more I probably could have figured the course out but I didn't want to have that frustration with my little brother and sister too um, but step number six uh, if you find this video helpful at any way Share some photos or anything, um, and if you have a YouTube channel, you can share that below, and I'll tag it in a short or something, Instagram, whatever. Um, so share your photos, please. Another reason you can share your photos is to help other people find obstacles. Um, I know they have Facebook uh, groups or whatever. I don't have Facebook, but they have Facebook groups that you can go on. Um, for stuff like that, like SEX24 courses, and just upgrades for your SEX24. So definitely check some of that out.
So now that we've gotten those few, few steps out of the way, one many steps, um, I really think there's not much to it. But now that we are done with the steps, I'm just going to talk about my course, um, building my course. So at the beginning, uh, you could see that I had no clue what I was doing. And uh, I had to redo things a few times because it actually rained the next day. And because the rock, that little rock mound I made with the dirt, um, was right beside the shop, the rain coming off the shop roof was um, just washing the dirt away. So that wasn't going to work because I wasn't going to be able to push that mountain out um, far enough to get it away from that because that would take up too much space because um, we actually park our tractor there. The next thing, I ended up trying to... Um, just pile up a bunch of rocks and see if that worked. I can't remember if I have any pictures um, of that. If so, they're going to be right here. Um, but I tried to pile up a bunch of rocks, but I didn't have the right rocks to do it. And there was just too many gaps. It was going to be too hard for the trucks. Um, so I had one thing in mind that I really wanted to build was a rock bridge. Or just, just a bridge um, leading and exiting some... Uh, a rock course whatever um, so I ended up getting that done in the end and I'm actually very happy with the course um, going through one tip that I didn't mention so I've noticed when moving my rocks or whatever um, to clear out the area I'll end up piling them up and it'll actually be a better course than it will once I try and actually make it so what I did was, um, in the end, I had the dirt. I didn't know what to do with it. It was just going to wash away. I had to get it as far as away, as far away as I could from the shop. So I ended up just making a line. I was like, here, we'll put rocks right here. This will kind of help um, make it like a step up for the rocks or whatever. Um, so I built like a little barrier for the rocks to go on the other side. And you'll see in the pictures here. Um, and just to let you know, I put those slates on it, one to kind of help keep the dirt there, and because we have cats and they like to mess around in the dirt, hopefully it'll kind of stop them. Um, also it'll help with the SEX-24s if we get off the course, um, slide off the course or whatever, it's not going to tear the dirt up too much. Um, back to talking about the rocks, um, trying to make your rock course. Um, like I said, when you throw them in a pile to get them out of the way, it's always better than what it is when you actually make the course. Um, so once I did the little dirt mound, or the dirt wall, I actually just tossed the rocks over there. I was like, you know what? I'll toss the rocks over there, and then I'll move them around um, so that they fit however I needed it. And that actually turned out really good. There were a few rocks I had to move or whatever, um, out of the way just completely but it actually turned out really good so if you're having a hard time try that out so in the end I started making a rock bed and then it goes over to the bridge the bridge actually has a split a split piece of wood or log um, just some firewood I had laying around um, and I used that to make a little a slope piece to get up onto the bridge the bridge part is actually a piece of wood that I used, or not really used, a piece of wood that got cut off a log um, when I was milling. That first cut I have to do um, just takes the outside layer off, and because a log is round, you know, it's you're cutting that one side off and you've got the little piece. So that's what that is. So I used that. I wanted to flip it over and use the side that had gotten cut uh, because I really liked it, but. I figured, eh, it's not really going to matter. It's probably going to do better, um, not rot as much if I flip it over where it, um, where it has the round part, uh, mostly because the water can run off of it. The next thing, I didn't have enough rocks to do a rock bed coming off of the bridge, so I ended up taking these big old, we found this concrete pad in, our gr in the ground when we were building our fence. Um, for some animals and we tore it up 
we had to get it out of the way so we could build the fence, so we ended up pulling it up. And that's what that is. Um, it was a lot bigger, I have way more of it. Um, but because it was a slab, I was able to use that. Um, I broke whatever pieces I had up for it. And then, as you can see, I kind of make made it like a step up, um, kind of like steps, either steps up to the bridge or down, with whichever way you're going. Uh, this course is, you can go either way, doesn't matter. And then it kind of goes around once you get off the bridge, off the um, rock steps. You can go around back. And I have a, just, I had them laying around. It was just a bunch of broken up rocks. It was little ones. Um, so I just tossed those there for like a little rock field. Um, and then it just comes and then comes out the uh, bridge. Um, I ended up using, I don't know what kind of rock it is. Um, but they were, they were these more square rocks that we had done or had gotten. Um, we had some spares. So I used those to prop up the wood for the bridge. Um, and it turned out really good. And then in the ending, um, you can see I put the slate on there. We already went over that. Um, and that can also be kind of used as a vertical or like a, a side um, hilling test. Um, it is a little slick, especially with those slate. I tried it with the Jeep, um, but I think we'll save the incline piece for that and just make a piece at the bottom where the truck can get up without me having to just set it on the piece, um, on the incline, and then driving. Um, I want to be able to drive onto it. <clears throat> yeah, so I think that'll be about it. Unless I find something while editing, I'll probably just do a voiceover while editing or whatever. Um, but here's some crawling footage. Uh, we ended up taking the blue C10 right here with the red wheels. Um, we actually took the trailer on the course and it actually did really good. The trailer did good on there. Um, the C10 did good with the trailer, especially with those tractor tires. There's not much, uh, grip. Um, we had the mini pins on there, but I lost a wheel nut. And I had some Injura 3 plus millimeter hexes. And I really need that wheel nut to use those hexes. So I ended up putting the, um, some stock size aluminum hexes on there. And just putting the tractor tires and setting it up for some tractor pulling. Until I can get the, um, the wheel nuts. There you go. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Um, so that you can see more on this course. I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, comment down below give me a like if you think so too um, and hopefully this video will help you um, there, I mean a few people have commented on um, needing something like this and I don't know this might be better or worse than my other video up here one of them it was up there earlier um, but yeah like and subscribe and on to the crawling footage mm -hmm.